Hi, and welcome to this video on mixed arithmetic and geometric sequences, brought to you by the Answer Series. In the first example, we have an arithmetic and geometric sequence with the same first term of 2 and the same second term. We know that the sum of the first three terms of the arithmetic sequence equals the third term of the geometric sequence. What we need to do is determine the first three terms of both sequences. Pause the video and try the question on your own. If you got stuck, I'm going to just start the question off with you. We know that the first term in each sequence is 2, so we can fill that in. We don't know the second term, but we know that they both have the same second term, so we're going to let those values be x. Pause the video and try one more time on your own. To generate the third term in each sequence, we're going to use the definitions of each sequence. So with the arithmetic sequence, if we subtract the first term from the second term, we get the common difference, which in this case is x minus 2. So our third term value is x plus that common difference, which gives us a third term value of 2x minus 2. If we add the first term, the second term, and the third term, we get a sum of those three terms equal to 3x. Working instead with the geometric sequence, we are going to take the second term and divide it by the first term to get the common ratio, which is x over 2. And multiplying that ratio by the value of the second term gives us the value of the third term. Now we're going to equate the value of the third term of the geometric sequence with the sum of the first three terms of the arithmetic sequence. When we solve that equation, we get two solutions, x equals 6 or x equals 0. We are rejecting x equal to 0 because 0 cannot be a term in a geometric sequence because it will give us an undefined ratio. Knowing that the second term is 6, we can now generate the third term in each sequence. So we have 2, 6, the gap is 4, so the third term is 10. In the geometric sequence, we also have 2 and 6. The ratio is 3, and so the third term is 18. In example 2, Eric thinks of two sequences. One is arithmetic and the other is geometric. Both sequences start with the number 3. The common difference of the arithmetic sequence is the same as the common ratio of the geometric sequence. In addition, we know that the sixth term of the geometric sequence is 96. What we need to do is find the first five terms of the arithmetic sequence. I want you to pause the video and try this question on your own, and then we'll go through the solution together. The most important information that they gave us lies in the fact that the sixth term value is 96. So if we use our general term for a geometric sequence ar to the n minus 1, and we substitute the value of the first term, which is 3, and the value of n, which is 6, into the formula, we get 3r to the 5 equal to 96. Solving that equation gives us a ratio equal to 2. We know that the ratio is the same as the common difference, so we take the first term and we keep adding 2 to each previous value until we get 5 terms. In example 3, we have a new sequence formed by adding together the corresponding terms of a geometric sequence and an arithmetic sequence. We will look at that just now in more detail. The common ratio of the geometric sequence is 2 and the common difference of the arithmetic sequence is 2. The first term of the new sequence is 1 and the second term of that sequence is 7. In order to understand this question properly, we need to understand that the corresponding terms of the geometric and arithmetic sequence are added to form the new sequence. What this means is that the first term of the arithmetic sequence and the first term of the geometric sequence must be added to get the first term of the new sequence. 
And we know from what we've been told that those two terms will produce a result of one. Now we're going to go to the second term of the arithmetic sequence, the second term of the geometric sequence, and we know that those two results will add up to seven. Pause the video and try the question on your own. If you got stuck, let the value of the first term in the arithmetic sequence be x and complete the table by using your understanding of the sequences and no other unknown values. We can generate the arithmetic sequence very easily by adding on 2. So now we have x plus 2 and then x plus 4. For the geometric sequence, we don't want a new variable. So we're going to take the result of 1, subtract x, and create our first term for our geometric sequence. Now we're going to double each result. So 1 minus x gives us 2 minus 2x, and 2 minus 2x gives us 4 minus 4x, because we know the ratio is 2. When we add those values together for the third column, we get 8 minus 3x. What we need to do is solve for x in order to be able to work out that result. Pause the video if you got stuck and see if you can answer this last bit on your own. To finish this question off, we take the second term of each sequence, we set up an equation x plus 2 plus 2 minus 2x equal to 7. That enables us to work out that x is equal to minus 3. Now we take the minus 3, we take the 8 minus 3x for the third term of the new sequence, we substitute the minus 3 in and we work out that the third term has a value of 17. In question 3.2, we need to determine the expression for the nth term of the new sequence. I want you to pause the video, use what we did in question 3.1, and see if you can finish off question 3.2. To start with, we are going to generate the arithmetic sequence. Starting with minus 3, we are going to get the first three terms. We're going to do the same with the geometric sequence. Using minus 3 into the formula for the first term, we will get 4, and then 8, and then 16. If you got stuck, pause the video, work out the general term for the arithmetic sequence and for the geometric sequence, and then see if you can work out the final answer. The formula for the arithmetic sequence general term is simply 2n minus 5. I've written down two options for the geometric sequence because we can do that by inspection, which will give us 2 to the power of n plus 1, or we can use the formula for the general term which will give us 4 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. If we use the formula, then when we write up the result for the new sequence, adding the two formulae, one from the arithmetic sequence and one from the geometric sequence, we get 2n minus 5 plus 4 times 2 to the n minus 1. If, on the other hand, we found the geometric sequence general term by inspection, then our formula will look slightly different. 2n minus 5 plus 2 to the power of n plus 1. In the last question of this video, we are going to use the fact that we know that the first, third and eighth terms of an arithmetic sequence form the first three terms of a geometric sequence. Given that the first term of the arithmetic sequence is 4, we need to find the common difference of the arithmetic sequence. Pause the video and try and answer this on your own. A hint in case you got stuck. Start with the fact that you know the first term is 4. The third term will be 4 plus 2 differences. And the eighth term will be 4 plus 7 differences. And those three terms form the first three terms of a geometric sequence. Pause the video and try the question again. If we divide the second term by the first term, we get the ratio. 
and if we divide the third term by the second term, we get the same ratio. So equating the ratios gives us a rather complicated equation which we need to solve. If we manipulate that, we will get it into standard form, which means the right side of the equation equals zero. Taking out the highest common factor, which is 4d, leaves us with a factor of d minus 3. We have two solutions, d equals 0 or d equals 3. If we need to know if we're right or wrong, we simply substitute d equal to 0 into our terms for d, and we get 4, 4, and 4, which gives us a geometric sequence of the ratio of 1. If instead we substitute 3, the term values will be 4, 10, and 25, and that gives us a common ratio of 5 over 2. If you struggled with any of the questions in this video, take the time to go back to them because you will find that when similar questions come across your path in the future, they are much easier to handle. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.